Hi everyone, um, a very unusual tutorial this week. Uh, ho I hope you're all doing very well. Um, I am filming this from Lanzarote. I'm over here in Costa de Gise um, in Lanzarote and it's roasting, absolutely roasting. I am burnt all over. Um, I was actually just taking a walk around here and I spotted a lovely little shipwreck. I think it would make a fantastic tutorial. I just had to videotape this. Um, I think it's very kind of very eye-catching. It's just kind of sat there in the middle of a kind of a dock here. Um, I'll show you. It's fantastic. Let me just turn the camera here and show you what I mean. Right. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? I was just strolling along along a walkway here by the main road and I took a walk up here. I spotted this boat, this ship, just sat here. Um, I presume they just left it run aground and they use it as a kind of a tourist kind of hot spot, you know, little, little attraction. Uh, perhaps they go diving or something. They do diving lessons here or something like that. Um, but yeah, look at this. Isn't this fantastic? I'm thinking now I could make a lovely little tutorial from this. So I'm going to take a couple of snaps uh, from different angles. Now, the camera is not showing the colours at their best. Um, so I might include this, I, I might increase the saturation slightly on the photograph just to bring out the colour a little bit more. There's lots of lovely rust and stuff like that down at the very end. But it's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? So here I am, in Costa de Gise. And there's another boat going off out to sea. Um, so yeah, I just thought I would share that with you. Let me just turn the camera here now so you can see the boat in the background. I don't know if you're catching that now because I can't see the screen. But yes, um, I'm going to take some snaps of this and when I get back home, which is tomorrow, I will do a tutorial on it, okay? I couldn't get a tutorial last week because I had so much to do. I was just so, so busy uh, trying to get commissions finished for people and stuff and I was getting ready, getting ready for holidays. So um, I, did, I just did not have time to do a video last week, so I apologise for that. But this week now we're going to do a really nice one. Either this, um, or, I don't know, maybe a nice water mill or something like that. So look, I'll speak to you very soon, and uh, we will do a nice tutorial. So keep watching, um, we'll have something coming up very, very soon. Thank you so much, and see you later. All the best. So what did you all think of that? That was lovely, wasn't it? That was very, very, um, a very kind of a special scene, I think. It's just really, it's just one of a kind of something that you will never kind of see um, again. So I just had to stop and take a nice little video of that. Now, I'm back in my studio, as we can see. Um, glad to be back. Well, glad to be back to my paints anyway. I've, been, I've had an entire week with no painting. So I'm, um, I'm really itching now to kind of get going with a nice painting and lash some colour on a canvas. Alright, so look, I have my bit of canvas here, which I will show you. Let me just get the screen right here now. Um, there. Now, it's a nice big canvas this time. It is 20 inches long, wide, by 12 inches high. So a nice decent size this week. And we can go into some lovely detail on the boat. So I have my canvas here with my palette. Um, I'll start putting paints out there in just a moment. Uh, so that, I think, is about it. So, um, yes, let's start. Let's start painting. Okay, grab your stuff and let's go and have some fun. Right, okay, here we go. Um, I'm going to put the picture on your screen there now. Now, isn't that just gorgeous? And, um, you know, I think we should just keep the sky simple, but focus on some lovely detail then on the bridge. Or on, what am I saying, on the boat, yes? Lots of lovely detail in the boat, but we keep the sky in the water, and it's nice and simple, not too much fuss, you know what I mean? Now, I have some paint left on, the, on an old palette here, okay? I'm just going to scrape some of that off, because it's still wet. So I'm going to scrape some Naples yellow off, put that on my tearaway palette, and I'll give that a wipe, just like so. Okay, and I also have some, uh, what's this, we have burnt umber on here as well so I'll take some of that put that there then clean that just not to get all the colors muddy and messed up you know what I mean I also have some burnt sienna so you see you can reuse all your colors 
just because it's on a palette doesn't mean you cannot use them over and over again um, I also have a little black which I can use keep that separate so down there so we don't get mixed up I have a little yellow but I don't think I need yellow I might need just a little maybe I'll take just a little bit of yellow just for the colour on the board um, but that's it that's the end of my palette I can put that away now and get some more colours out here let's get some white lots of lovely white and I'm thinking I might use two blues in this I might use some of each I'll use some cobalt blue just because that sky is a nice kind of a soft blue up there isn't it so I'll use some cobalt blue and I'll also for some nice deep strong shadows I'll also use some phthalo blue phthalo blue it's very very dark kind of an ocean blue so I put that down here in the corner and I think now all I need is some red and I'm thinking um, let me just I'm looking at my box here now perhaps a little crimson I can see hints of crimson now in this in this painting some nice little hints of crimson some crimson I think that's all we need I would think that's probably good enough for now okay I also have now this this time this week I'm going to use a different mixture I have with me some uh, turpentine with some linseed oil added in okay and I'm just going to try some linseed oil this time now it looks pretty much just like regular turpentine it's clear I put maybe 80% turpentine to 20% linseed oil and I just want the oil to help um, help the paint kind of flow around and it will help it stay wetter for longer um, and it'll it will really help with smoothing out brush strokes as well so I said I'd try a little bit of linseed oil in it this time now I primed my canvas just once with a, just a water based undercoat primer then I gave it a, a very light rub of sandpaper so it's lovely and smooth so I think we're ready now really just to start sketching and let's just get into this painting enough talking says you isn't that right we've had enough talking just get on and paint let's take the pencil I want to put a horizon line nice and low down here now as you can see on the photograph it's quite low isn't it but I don't want to go too low I want to get in some of the ocean so let's just bring that across there it doesn't have to be perfect now that's way off I can see that look do you know what I'll do why not just take a bit of masking tape that's probably the easiest thing to do isn't it and you can kind of judge pretty much by the masking tape I think that's probably fairly good there isn't it let's go with that there that was a mile off wasn't it I tell you something see I'm terrible at drawing I can't draw to save my life um, now I'm going to just draw through the masking tape all right so we have say the bottom of the board comes along and it's kind of going off at an angle to help give perspective isn't it so it's not kind of dead on straight sideways so it goes off at a slight angle and over here then goes up like that and it comes down and look I'm just drawing this now very very roughly very loosely and now let's come over in a more here let's get this a nice little curve just there now it comes up here doesn't it and it kind of turns isn't that right and it goes over like that and then it goes right up like that at a good angle very very high up there isn't it and I'm thinking um, let's see let's stop it maybe just there for now I'll put a slight curve on it and then down okay now I'm kind of zooming in on the photograph slightly there's a slight kind of a, a slant in it here and there's a very very sharp angle from here all the way down then isn't there let's just kind of go with that for now we make this higher here look there then we have the bridge or the decks of the boat now I'm going to put a slight angle on this like this you see just a very slight angle and I'm going to come up then to about here so about halfway is I'm going to come up like that then and we have the kind of the bridge I suppose you could call it comes over like that doesn't it and then it turns it turns and goes back down again you see now I'm not going to make a very sharp angle on it down there uh, we have another bit that comes over like that and we have lots of there's just lots going on here isn't there lots of windows and doors and poles and all sorts of stuff going on so I'm just going to put it very roughly um, just put in where I think 
everything is kind of going Does that makes sense um, there's another bit here and let me just get a look at some of the angles on this now I just want to make it look uh, two-dimensional so we have a light side and a dark side then you see there are lots of kind of little buildings and whatnot going on up here so because it's kind of resting at an angle it's difficult to get that kind of two-way perspective let's put the spout in here a nice big spout and put a little curve on that um, now we will work on these we can bring these a bit higher if we want not to worry okay this is just a very loose kind of initial sketch that's all it is now up in the front here as well we have one don't we um, now as you see it's kind of it's stuck in the water um, so it's difficult to kind of visualize as it's going off into the distance that's kind of creating perspective but also the bottom end of the boat is down under the water as well so that's why there's such an angle on the boat here now we can adjust it as we go all right not to worry let's put in the front bridge up here um it goes along to about here doesn't it and look we could even put a slight angle on it because it could be kind of leaning to one side slightly does that make sense like so and then it turns here and it comes back slightly doesn't it and then it comes down again so there we are now i think that's all we need to kind of paint um for now so we can kind of paint around most of this with our sky and um that will then help us later on fill in this without having to go into our sky and mix with blues and all that kind of thing so um yeah that's it pretty much done i think we'll crack on and get the sky done yes what do we think i'll take my uh, let me see brushes 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 i could use my large stubby or i could use a medium stubby um i think i'll just go for a large and a medium one this week now i have a new medium stubby brush here you can see that but it's very kind of flat so i need to wear this in a good bit It'll be very difficult now to paint the sky with this brush because it's so soft and delicate. I want something a bit more rough and ready, something a bit thicker. So this is kind of well worn in. I'll use this and I'll use my large stubby, all right? Now, I'm gonna dip into my turpentine. I'm just gonna dip in once or twice like this, wet the brush, okay? And then, Soak off the excess gently like that. And let's take some, let's try some cobalt blue today. Okay, try some cobalt for a change. Plenty of cobalt and plenty of white. Now because there's linseed oil in the mix, it's very sort of oily and creamy. So it will flow much further, see it? So add in plenty of paint, don't be shy. Come on, go right in there and add loads of paint. If you find it's still too wet, just take a bit of white because the white will thicken it up very quickly now that's probably still very wet look it's running down the the palette you see so what i'm going to do is just dab it very quickly on the brush like that and that will or on the tissue and that will soak up a lot of the moisture in the brush so i just want to go with a nice kind of a light blue to begin with now that's still a bit thin for me and the problem is if it's too thin um you'll see the canvas grain through the paint it'll be almost like putting a watercolor on a canvas it just will not work you need to have a little bit of thickness and a bit of body to your paint i, I find to um to get it to kind of cover the canvas well now oh, that's much better much 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 better just use plenty of paint don't be shy and let's just go along and paint in this lovely sky this is just the initial kind of color now for the sky. I will be going over this with some darker color in a moment. But I just want to fill in most of the sky now with this color. Now I'll tin the brush very slightly with a little tiny bit of thinners again. And I'll go back in and get more paint. And you see I'm kind of dragging the paint around also. So you might find when you put the paint on initially it doesn't go very far but then i'm kind of using the brush to drag the paint across the canvas 
and it takes it takes a bit of practice look just keep practicing i promise you will get there don't worry i know i get a lot of messages from a lot of people um saying look no matter what i do i just cannot get this right or get that right and you know what i say look it's just practice you have to keep practicing i i almost never get my paintings right first time um when i kind of switch off the camera sometimes i go along and i might fix a couple of trees or i might just add some highlights or something well like do you know what i'm what i'm showing you is just a basic beginning um how to get going with a painting and how to progress a painting along and then you can kind of add your own little details then afterwards if you like now there we go now i'm going to start lighting it as it comes down so just dab your brush there with some just dab it on the tissue rather soak up some of that paint let's go for some white just on its own and a little thinners and when i say little i mean just a tiny bit on the corner of your brush it's just to thin the white only very slightly and there still is a little bit of blue on the brush so that's fine okay not to worry i might even stick one or two clouds across this sky i think i'm not too sure one or two little puffy clouds might be nice what do you reckon or should we just leave it plain we'll uh, you know we'll we'll try as we go isn't that what they say we'll just see see how it works see how it works out and see where it takes us nothing is ever set in stone with painting i think it, con it constantly changes and evolves as you're going along isn't that right and so look that's the fun about it too isn't it there we go now you see i'm just kind of going around it very quick very loosely with some white just around the shape of the boat don't be too careful now with this okay you can have a bit of fun just go right over the pencil lines if you like as well because we will be putting dark color over this anyway and there we go flicking the brush left and right my goal is just to cover the canvas that's all get paint on the canvas and once it's on we can then worry about adding some bits of dark to it here and there so there how about that now i'm going to add some phthalo blue to the top of this so with your same brush it's quite dry look it's nice and dry pick up a tiny bit of phthalo blue and look at that now that's a nice kind of a greeny blue now isn't it and with that just a little on the tip of your brush i'm just going to start adding some of that across there coming down only maybe two inches or something and start softening that into the cobalt blue so now it's just going to start off slightly darker at the top and get lighter and lighter as it comes down okay and it just gives a nice contrast that's all nice rich blue sky up there now i want a bit of white there just to cover in there with the paint is kind of soaking into the canvas slightly you can see the kind of the canvas grain showing through slightly that's completely normal now i'm taking a soft brush I'm just going to go along and soften some of that out. I just want to get rid of some of the brush strokes on this now. Not everything. I just want to smoothen it very slightly. So it's a nice smooth sky. And it's almost showing itself. It's almost showing little kind of clouds here and there. It's not a completely flat blue. Does that make sense? Not completely anyhow. And there we are. Now, I don't know if we make it a bit bluer. You see, I'm thinking now, all the time, um, the photograph is very vibrant and bright. I think I might just add a bit more darkness. And, and, a touch of crimson, I think. And that, I think, now would make a big difference, wouldn't it? Let's try this. There. How's that for colour? So just try it, come on. What have we got to lose? It's only a bit of paint. If you make a mistake you can rub it back out go over it with something and fix it okay not to worry a painting is only paint on canvas you can fix mistakes you can do whatever you like now as it comes down i'm just going to add a tiny bit of white to it just to help soften it into that blue underneath 
There, how's that? No, there we go. No, look at that. It's a nice blue sky there now, isn't it? And softening all the way down, look. Very gently towards the bottom. And then let's soften it again with our brush. How's that? No? Are you happy with that? Nice varied sky there, isn't it? And that's the end of it. Now we don't have to worry about the little buildings off here in the distance. We can put them in if we like, but really we don't have to. We're just focusing on the boat at the moment. So that's it. Brush is down. Peel off our masking tape. Okay. And let's follow that all the way down. And let's go over here. Like that. Ready for the boat. Now, I was just looking at the sky there and I was just thinking, perhaps a couple of nice little wispy, thin kind of clouds. Just one or two here and there. I was just thinking it might help break up the sky just a little. So I'm going to use my flat uh, medium stubby. Now, any little flat brush will do fine. Once it has a fine tip, a very kind of ed pointy edge. So let me show you what I mean. Now, with a dry brush, I'll just take a little bit of white. All right, just a little bit of titanium white on the tip of my brush. I'm thinking, um, because it's kind of quite low down here, to kind of balance it out slightly, I might put one or two, just like that, look. I'm just kind of putting them down at an angle, kind of flicking them across. And put one or two across here. You see, I'm not kind of paying too much attention to the clouds. It's just an impression of one or two sort of wispy clouds just up and high up in the sky, passing over. And I think that's even enough. I, I'm not going to bother going into too much detail and soften them out. It just takes the edge off of the cloud, that's all. There. And I think that's fine. Okay, that'll do just absolutely fine. It's just a hint of one or two, that's all. Right, moving along. Moving along to our lovely boat. And I think, and let me just have a look at brushes here now. I think for the boat I'll just use a nice medium kind of a flat brush. Uh, this is a size 6 flat brush. Just a very kind of an old worn brush. And I'm going to paint in, I think first I'm going to paint in these, this hull. I'd like to get the hull done and I can see there's a lot of rust and there's a lot of red and black and brown lovely colors so let's just dampen the brush very quickly and then dry it on the tissue okay like that just just to moisten the paint that's all it is and let's take some burnt cyan and let's take some um, crimson and I'm just going to try the error with this now I'm just going to go in along and trying something if it doesn't work I'll try something else and I might try a touch of burnt umber. Is this burnt umber? Yes. This is burnt umber here. And let's just give those a very quick mix. And let's just try it. So you can see now how transparent those colours are. The crimson and the cyanes are very transparent colours. You can see it's very vibrant and transparent. Whereas the burnt umber is more opaque. You see, it kind of covers that bit better. Now I'm just dampening my brush again and I'm going to take a lot of this cyan and a lot of crimson and I might just go over it with that first. So what I'll do is I generally when I paint like this I tend to put on a kind of a base coat and then I add my darks into that and I add my lights into that. There we go, see? Just pull it right along and I think this is a nice medium colour to kind of begin with because it's nice and rich. So cyan with crimson is always a lovely rich and especially for sunsets actually. It's a gorgeous colour for sunsets. And come down here and fill that in like so. Fill that in now. Fill that shape right in. Just go along, cover it with paint. Okay? It's not difficult, look, it's just paint. 
and lean down hard on the brush that will give you a nice clean straight line and then it turns down here doesn't it like so I know there's a lot of brown over here now but I can add that in as I go so perhaps I'm going to dampen my brush very gently again just the tip of my brush I'll take some crimson and some burnt umber so now it's getting to a nice dark kind of a ready brown a pinky brown and I'll go along the bottom now with this and you can see like on on the photograph the bottom of the boat almost disappears into the water doesn't it just in this section here so it has to be nice, nice and dark there we are and let's go again so very transparent colours they're very vibrant and very transparent um, one way of dimming these down I suppose is to add a touch of black the black would really darken them down if you want to but I'm just going to start off with this nice rich warm kind of pinky brown it's a nice rich colour isn't it and I'm going to actually now start adding some just burnt umber on its own to the darker section here and you can see now the oil is really kind of moving things around it's very flowy with the oil with the linseed oil in the turpentine everything just becomes really kind of flowy um, I'm going to take some crimson with a touch of Naples yellow and I can see there's a hint of that kind of along this side there and of course you see the Naples yellow then um, will really make the paint lovely and creamy and cover it very well so let me show you you can see now how well it covers with the Naples yellow in it you see it really covers the canvas grey much better doesn't it now dry off the brush I'm going to now go into some I'm going to take some black but I need to get some crimson as well my crimson is gone so bear with me ah there it is bear with me crimson and I'm going to take some crimson with some black plenty of black now don't be shy and I'm going to go up here and paint just this kind of corner of the boat where it kind of turns slightly so there's a bit of a shadow soften it down there like that and then soften it across up to a point like this you see pulling it very very gently down hardly even touching the canvas now at this stage and I'll come down here with that lovely dark colour and I'm going to fill in that dark colour let's take some burnt umber actually and soften that up it's really dark down in this corner isn't it and soften that around follow that line okay so now you can begin to see it starting to take shape now all of these colours are still very transparent um, let's see I want to try and stiffen the colours up a bit more kind of what would they say make them more opaque so let's take some burnt sienna with some Naples yellow and I can see a lovely colour just around the centre here now it's only a hint of it I'm going to just drag that thick colour now just over that red and that's kind of ticking, tickening up the paint all the time on the canvas let's pick up a bit more and let's come along I can see little patches of it you see there's little patches of it just here and there over on this side and again when you're painting this always remember follow the brush the direction of the hull or the boat or whatever it is that you're painting always follow that direction now I'm going to make a little purple some thalo blue some crimson make a nice nice rich warm kind of a purple okay and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put that nice rich warm purple in here and soften it across it's really dark isn't it and I think a nice rich purple down here will really show off the shadow on the boat really show it off 
and I might even take a touch of white in that just to brighten it very very slightly ever so slightly a bit more blue and then that should really help there we are that's a bit better now isn't it that little slight hint of white there now just made all the difference in that I think now isn't that lovely coming on well isn't it uh, we have um, let me see let me see let me see now I just want to make it much kind of rougher like it's rust around here so I might try a little crimson and I might try a little Naples yellow, uh, perhaps some burnt cyanide in that. And I just want to kind of make it more textured, just add a little bit of texture to it. So with the tip of the brush, I'm just going to kind of pull down in kind of light brush strokes here, you see? Just adding a little bit of texture here and there. I'm not kind of painting anything in particular, I just want to give it the impression of some texture on the boat. So it's not completely smooth. Understand what I mean? And you could even bring it down into the darker sides as well. A bit more crimson on my brush there now, see? Uh, let's go over here slightly, very, very gently here and there. I want to keep the kind of the shape of this dark hair, all right? I don't want to kind of ruin that too much. So I'm going to form that with my brush as well. There we go, and we bring it on down here then. Now, clean the brush if it gets dirty, just give it a quick wipe. And now, I'll give it a clean of my turpentine, okay? Give it a nice clean, give it a good clean on the tissue. And then I'm going to take some cadmium yellow and a little crimson. And I might take a little touch, although I don't think I need any Naples yellow in this, to be quite honest. A nice kind of a rust colour for a board here. And let's go over here with this. Just down at the end, just dab it in here and there, look the tip of the brush isn't that lovely and we're doing all this now with just one brush you can create a lot of different techniques with just one brush as well you know you don't have to go changing brushes for this or for that um, let's just try and even do a bit of stippling look okay now I don't know if you want me to zoom in or not will I zoom in on the boat so you can see a little better or is that fine I think that's okay look we leave it let's not get too fussy uh, a little touch of cadmium yellow here and there so look you could have little things growing on the, the boat on the hull little bits of this and little bits of that um, make a nice orange just get a nice orange in over here into the dark then you see And let's just kind of stipple that along, kind of gently soften it in, here and there. Remember to clean your brushes in between. And what I might do is, with my soft blender brush, I might just soften one or two of these down very gently. Just flick along them very, very, very gently, all right? Just to take the, the edge off of the brush stroke, that's all. There we go now. How's that looking now? Okay, because this was most of the painting really is kind of focusing on this, this hull, this dark shape here, isn't it? That's really what's kind of catching your eye, I find. Now, I want to put a little, um, a little couple of lines through this, okay? Take a palette knife or a pointy brush, whatever you like. I'm going to take a little touch of the black. Perhaps a touch of the burnt umber even just on its own will do fine as well. 
and I want to get a nice roll of paint just on the very edge of my knife. Now a very very thin roll and I'm going to go, um, let's see, let's give it a slight curve here and then bring it down very gently like so. Now that was probably even a little thick so let's try a little thinner one okay. Let's go down here like this. All right, a little wonky, but it's fine. Absolutely fine. All right, there we are. Yep, that looks good. And in fact, we could even use our palette knives to create a bit of texture too. Uh, it's just a very light spot here, which I just want to really capture the texture on that spot. Um, little bit of Naples yellow perhaps and a bit of the orangey colour. Let's just try this. Aha! Now look at that. You see? I wasn't even going to try it but I'm glad I did. It's just around here isn't it? Does that very kind of warm colour, rusty, kind of warm rusty colour. And we could even go down along the bottom with that too if we like. Naples yellow, a bit of cadmium yellow. There we go, like that. And we could even, with a very small pointy brush, let me see if I can find one. Okay, there we are. Very small pointy brush. Take a touch of Pink but white. Now, that brush is not very pointy, really. Let me get a nice pointy brush here. La, 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 la. Aha. There we go. A new brush. A brand new pointy brush. Let me just take some Naples yellow, crimson with a little white. And let me just go and hit the tops of these dark lines down with a little highlight. Okay? Just a little here and there. See? It's just to separate those lines, that's all. Now, oh, how's that looking? And look, we also have, because it's um, rusted and broken up, let me zoom in, we have some little holes down at the bottom here of the hull. Now you can see the hull there, okay? You can see that fine. Down around here we have some large, which kind of black, very dark black holes where it's been eaten away from time and from salt water and whatever. So we can just suggest a couple of those. See? Uh, perhaps one little round one here. Plenty of black just on the tip of your brush. Don't be shy. Uh, we have a couple around here. And then with the same brush, just give it a quick clean there. And we can take some lights. So we could take some, and now I want a nice bright orange. So crimson, some cadmium yellow, and a little white. And I can hit them then with some highlights as well. You see, it's just a suggestion, that's all. Just to suggest a kind of a broken up hull, rotten and rusty and all sorts of things. All right, now, let me just get the camera back to normal, and there we go. Let's move on to the top half. Now we can worry about little details later, all right, don't worry about them. Let's just get this top half filled in. I'll use my medium stubby brush. Again, I'll give it a quick clean, and I'm going to use just 
firstly some Naples yellow with some white okay because I can see Naples yellow and white up here and them two colors now really complement each other don't they so go along there fill that in I can just make out the pencil line still just a little bit and then into that I want to take a touch of burnt umber just a little touch and that will do the shadow side of the boat okay I'll put a, hmm, I have a little patch of white there but that's fine I can soften that white let me get a small brush here now and I just want to soften some whitey blue into this hair where I just missed it earlier there that's fine so we have these two lovely colors now okay bring it up a little bit more there that's one side done I, I will need more white on my palette this is this is going to be a nice painting I think when it's finished it's going to be these very rich colors are going to be very eye-catching aren't they I'm very very excited about all of this mm. and it was a fantastic holiday I have to be honest it was lovely it was perhaps a little too hot for me um, you know I generally tend to hide when the Sun comes out anyway I'm not a big kind of a Sun person but I didn't mind it really there was lots of shade around the pool area that kind of stuff so I really didn't mind it now little burnt dumbo with crimson and a little white and I have some Naples yellow already on the brush it's like a pinky kind of a fawn color is what I can see and let's go over here and fill in all these with this color go right down there don't worry if you pick up some of the colour from the boat, that's absolutely fine. Um, I just did, but that's grand. Not to worry. Um, let's get some more Naples yellow. Because as it turns, it gets very bright, doesn't it? And you can even use some cadmium yellow with white as well, and I will do in a moment. So I'm just using the edge of my brush just to get some nice, clean, sharp lines. See? You can just use a small round brush for this as well if you like it, that's perfectly fine. Whichever brush you're happy to use, just use. Um, I just like using these flat brushes, they give a nice edge to some of the um, details. And it just saves a lot of work as well in the process. And let's go across here with that. Then it turns slightly. Okay, like so. Um, all right, that's looking good. I think I'll switch down to a little rounder brush and I'll take some burnt umber, a little black, a little bit of crimson, and I'll just go in here. There's a very dark area in here, isn't there? And I never actually checked up the history of this boat and why it's here. Um, I must do actually. I think it would make for a very interesting story. Perhaps it was just being decommissioned and they left it here. That's a possibility, isn't it? If anybody knows, please do share. And we have a dark coming kind of down here. Like so. You can see how I'm doing this now. I'm just being very loose with all of these. Uh, little black. Let's go up here and suggest some doors and windows and such you see it's just a little brush stroke that's all a very very simple brush stroke uh, let's get little detail across there suggest little bits and bobs isn't that what I say bits and bobs we have a nice little doorway here and we have two windows either side like so Now, get some burnt umber. Burnt umber is a nice colour for this. Uh, okay. 
Just suggesting little details, that's all. See, I'm just suggesting details. I'm not doing anything specific. Uh, right, what else have we got down here? Let's get a couple of little windows here. You probably can't even see them on the photograph, but I know that there's little windows and stuff popping up and down here and there. Little bars, um, lots of little things. As I keep saying, bits and bobs. There we go. Um, all right, just looking good. And it turns here then. Okay, um, I'm going to darken some sections because I know there's a slightly darker colour on one or two of the sides here. No, I need to go darker with that. I just picked up a bit of brown there for this, just to add a little shadow to one or two sides. You see, it gives that more three-dimensional kind of feel, doesn't it? Now, let's go up here and get some windows and bits and bobs in on this one. And of course, working wet into wet, it's going to be more difficult. Uh, you can, if you like, leave this to dry and then put in all your little details. But I just kind of, I suppose I'm used to working wet into wet like this. And I love the kind of, the natural feel it gives working wet into wet. It's something that I've always done and I think it's something that I will continue to do. There we are. Uh, let's take some cyanide and let's pop a little cyanide in here and there. I can see kind of like red doors, ready brown kind of doors. Or even the tops of doors, you could call it. Now, let's switch to a very small brush again. Very small pointy brush. And I pick up some black. Just some neat black on the tip of my brush. I'm just going to go along the top of this. I'm popping some details. Um, let's see what else we have. We have some bars kind of coming along here. coming together isn't it um, I'm going to push actually I'm going to push a nice dark stripe just along the top of the hull I can see it's nice and kind of rich and dark up there isn't it then turn it down and bring it along and let it kind of fade away is it this coming on well? This is a really enjoyable painting, I have to say. I love painting th things like this. They're really kind of um, unique. Um, okay, we have some little wires and barriers and all that kind of thing up here. Again, keep it simple. And I know I keep banging on about simple, 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 but that's what I'm trying to get across, okay? Now, there we go. And you can hold your breath while you're doing this as well. A little, a little white on there. And keep cleaning your brush. Make sure it's nice and clean as you go. I think now I will do the spout. This kind of spout here, yes? And I'll get another brush for that, a small brush, look. I have a small little flat brush here. And it's kind of a blue, isn't it? So let's just go for a nice black with a bit of blue for the top half of that because it's very dark across the top of that, isn't it? Like so. Again, you see, my paint is very dry. I'm just putting on thick paint on its own. 
You can dampen the brush a little if you like. And then clean the brush. And let's get some blue, little titanium white. Now that was phthalo blue I used. Little white, nice thick color. Put that on, see what it looks like. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm happy enough with that. There we go. And look, we're only going for an impression. All right, you don't have to go painting every single little detail. All I want is an impression, that's all. Now look, I'll take a bit of white and I'll just dab a little bit of white here and there on that. Just to suggest that there's little bits of writing or signs or whatever the case may be. Just here and there. Yeah, a little bit of light. Catching it here and there. And I might actually add a little touch of dark to the back end of it here. Okay, like that, and soften across with your brush.